Okay, we continue our series on Stoicism by going through the Enchiridion by Epictetus and the translation How to Be Free by Professor A. A. Long. We had reached chapter 34, which is a fun one. Whenever the impression of some pleasure comes into your mind, guard yourself against being carried away by it, just as you should do with impressions in general. Let the thing wait a bit and give yourself a pause, then think of both times. First the one when you will enjoy the pleasure, and then the one after that when you will be sorry and be angry with yourself. Now contrast them with your joy and self-satisfaction if you abstain, but if you find this the right moment to embark on the affair, do beware that you are not being overwhelmed by its charm and sweetness and allure. Think how much better it is to realize that you have won this victory now. So we have a few things here that are very interesting. The first point is that of impressions, which Epictetus mentions, right? Guard yourself against being carried away by it, just as you should do with impressions in general. Now, this, this boils down to an argument that we have given many times before, we have discussed many times before in these videos. What's very important to the Stoics is that you do not suffer because of something that really happens. You suffer because of how you think about that thing. And one very important um, uh, concept in, in, uh, uh, in Stoicism are the, 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 the phantasme. Uh, phantasme doesn't really mean fantasies, but something like impressions. I think Professor Long has, has, a, has a very good translation here. A very important aspect in Stoicism and they have a whole theory which is very complicated and to be honest I also think fairly nonsensical given what we know about modern day cognitive neuroscience but about how impressions form that your mind is like a like a wax tablet and, and something some sort of sensory information comes in and it forms an impression like it would on a wax tablet. Well I mean you have to give the Stoics credit, they really try to reason about these things in a time where they, they didn't have MRI, they didn't have fMRI, they didn't have any fancy brain scan techniques, that they, they, they couldn't really know, right? So that's okay, but the idea of impressions is very important in Stoicism because of what I said before. If an impression comes in, you can do all sorts of things. You can choose to give it a cent and go along with it and say, well I lost my job, that is terrible, horrible, awesome, uh, uh, awful, uh, I, I love it because I wanted another job, or uh, I hate it because what will I do now, I'll be destitute, etc. So again, all of these things are impressions. Uh, 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 sorry, there, there is the impression of I have lost my job, and then there is all kinds of interpretations, right? So Epictetus here once again says, be aware of those impressions. Be aware of how you respond to them, right? because that will determine how you feel about what has really happened, good or bad, and that is within your choice. It just depends on how you choose to respond to an initial impression. But that's just the general theory that we have discussed, I think, a few times before now. Now he's talking about interesting pleasures. Now, the big, the big uh, opponents of, no, actually a few opponents of the Stoics, but in ancient Greece, there was a particular school of thought, school of philosophical thought, uh, called the, uh, the, the, the school of Epicurus, right? And they were pretty much everything that, that the Stoics are not, and the Stoics were everything that the Epicureans were not. And I'm not, that's not a value judgment. I think some points of Epicureanism actually make a lot of sense. But they were kind of, um, you could say academic opponents, right? They, they did not really like each other. And one of the reasons for that is that Epicurus, who is very often, I think, misinterpreted, but Epicurus, the founder of that school, said that pleasure is very important. Now, a lot of people take that to mean, oh, okay, hedonism, I can eat everything I want, drink everything I want, have sex, do everything what I want, you know. That was not exactly what Epicurus was saying, okay? Epicurus's argument is, is quite a bit more complicated than that, but he does say that pleasure is good in life because you can enjoy pleasure and as a result kind of enjoy your life but everything within reason there is some uh, he, he says for example like well just be very hungry and bread dry bread and water will be a great pleasure right but that focus on pleasure goes very much against 
stoicism, right? So that, that's why I wanted to bring that up. Stoics say, well, no, actually, you should avoid pleasure. Marcus Aurelius is very clear on that topic. He says you should just, just, just don't. Basically, it's very, very austere. Uh, Musonius Rufus, in one of his lectures, talks about, it's very interesting, very interesting, I find, because that's ancient Rome, and he, he talks about premarital sex and whether that's acceptable or not. And um, uh, his, uh, his conclusion is that it's not because it's amoral, but he then also continues to say, but, you know, once you're married, you can have sex, but only to have children. And that sounds very harsh, and that would, I guess, not really be Epicurean. But the point he was trying to make comes from a broader Stoic viewpoint, which is the problem with these kinds of slippery slopes of interesting pleasures that you can engage in, not just sexuality, but other things, drinking alcohol, using drugs, eating, like overeating uh, good food, etc., in the long run can become more problematic. And I think that's the Stoics kind of hit the nail on the head there. And Epictetus here is... is very clear on that as well, I think, right? He says, um, if you find this the right moment to embark on the affair, do beware that you are not being overwhelmed by its charm and sweetness and allure. Right? That's that slippery slope. It may sound like a good idea, and I'm speaking from experience, it may sound like a good idea to eat the whole chocolate bar. Chocolate is one of my vices. And it may sound like a good idea, and it may be very tempting, and just, uh, just another piece, just one more piece, and then before you know it, the whole bar is gone. I'm sure we have all been in that situation. And at the moment, it's really fun. An hour later, not so much. When you are curled up in a fetal position, dying and clutching your stomach, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a different story. So, Epictetus, that, that's what he is getting at, right? It's not necessarily wrong to do something that is pleasurable and fun, and I also think Let's be fair that in this day and age, I don't really think that this very harsh stoic perspective of you cannot really pursue any pleasurable things, it's not really feasible, right? In fact, Professor Long, the translator of this book, I, uh, I, I saw one of his presentations, not in real life, but on video, and he, he recounts, it was a, this is a philosophical joke, uh, he recounts how he was asked by an interviewer what school of philosophy, because he was a professor of Hellenistic philosophy, so all, he knew a lot about all of these schools, Stoicism, Epicureanism, etc. He asked, he was asked uh, what kind of school he would, he, he kind of believed in himself, and he said, well, in the morning, when I do my writing, I'm a Stoic, and in the afternoon, when I do my teaching, I'm a skeptic, and in the evening, when I enjoy myself, I'm an Epicurean, right? Now, that was, again, <laughs> philosophical joke. But the point he makes, I think, is very valid, right? You, you, the, 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 in, in this day and age, saying, and I'm not talking about religion, I'm just talking about sort of cultural belief, premarital sex is, is, is completely amoral and you should only have sex to have children. Well, good luck with that, right? That, that's, that, that's, not, that's not a tenable position anymore. So... What I really like is Epictetus's advice, because this was just my sort of overview of, of the role of pleasure in Stoicism. The Stoics are afraid that once you indulge, you, you, go, you, you fall to the dark side, let's call it that way, and you start to suffer because you get obsessed with things, you may get addicted to things, and that's always a bad thing, right? Don't forget those four cardinal virtues that we talked about before, and one of them is temperance, right? Everything in moderation. Now, if that's the, the cardinal virtue, then there is also a cardinal vice, which is the opposite of that, right? The opposite of one of the other virtues, wisdom, would be folly. Well, the opposite of moderation, temperance, is indulgence. So if, in the mind of a Stoic, moderation is good, then indulgence is bad. And I think we can agree with that. You can enjoy some chocolate, but eating a whole chocolate bar, let alone multiple chocolate bars, is a bad thing. It is bad for you, right? Again, found that out the hard way. Now, Epictetus gives us really good advice, I think, on how to deal with these situations. Because we all have things. We all make agreements with each other. 
and with ourselves. Okay, today I'm only going to eat this much or drink this much or do this this much or uh, don't do this, etc. Right? Now, I'm not talking about the don't do this as in don't get angry. That, that's a different chapter. But here we're talking about, let's, let's call it our indulgences, things that we kind of like to do. And sometimes you don't. Sometimes you tell yourself, okay, today I'm not going to finish the whole bag of M&Ms. I'm only going to have five or ten or whatever. Good luck with that too. Um, now, I think Epictetus here gives us very good advice on how to deal with that. He says, whenever the impression of some pleasures come into your mind, guard yourself against being carried away by it, just as you should do with impressions in general. Let the thing wait a bit and give yourself a pause. Then think of both times. First the one where you will enjoy the pleasure, and then the other, and then the one after that, when you will be sorry and angry with yourself. And that I have found a pretty good way to deal with this. It's easy to say, well, I'll just have one piece of this, I have a bit of that, etc. It's a lot harder to not do that, to abstain from whatever it is you're trying to abstain from. And I found that this can be a helpful way to look at things. So you picture the event in your mind. If I have another piece of chocolate now, I will enjoy it in the short run, but in the long run, I'll be upset. I'll dislike myself, maybe angry. Uh, that, that's a very strong re reaction, but, but I'm, I'm exaggerating a bit here because once again, I have failed my approach to not do this, not eat this much, not overeat, not overdrink, not, not smoke five packs a day, whatever. So I found this to work pretty well, right? You just picture it. And to do that, you have to do exactly what Epictetus says. You have to give yourself a pause. And what I've often found is that, let's say you're in the mood for another piece of chocolate, if you wait five minutes and you think, never mind, it's okay, I've had enough, it gets easier. And I also find that the more you do this, it does get easier. It gets easier to do abstain from whatever it is you're trying to abstain from. And again, I'm not saying that you should never indulge in something, that you should never have that piece of chocolate, that you should never, you know, treat yourself to something fun. But everything in moderation. Being a Stoic is about that. Everything in moderation. And to quote Oscar Wilde, everything in moderation, including moderation. That wouldn't even be Epicurean. That's folly. But I think that's a good mental strategy. Take a pause. And then think about if you should really be doing this or if afterwards you're going to regret it. And if you take those few minutes, just a few minutes, all it takes, it becomes much easier to say, I shouldn't and I won't. And that's it. So this was Epictetus about uh, moderation. And I think this is a good way to do it. Hope this was useful and I'll see you again next week.